Now for demonstration purpose, we have this network. So this is the source network, this is the destination network. And you can see we have one path, which is from this path, and we also have this path, okay? So we have to configure this router. So first we are going to see that what is in its routing table. So for that show IP root, so we can see the routing table here. We can see there is no route, these are only connected. So these are directly connected interfaces with this router, these three ones. So one, two, three, these, this, is, this is showing information about these connected interfaces or connected subnets. But now we are going to configure a static route to reach this network and this network is actually 192.168.4.0. This is the network. And to reach that, we are going to set this our this router as our next hop. So what we do, we go in global configuration mode, so config T, and here we say IP root, and then destination network that is 192.168.4.0, and then subnet mask that is 255.255.255.0. And what is the address of the next hop? So you can see here the next hop is 22. So 192.168.2.2. There. So we set a static route to reach there. And if you want to see here, then you can see show IP root. And you can see here this S stands for static. So here you can see in this code somewhere S stands for static, so this is static. So in addition to these three routes, we have the static route to reach this destination. And this one shows actually the default administrative distance of this uh, static route. So we, are, we, we can reach this destination via this route. And now we are going to set the floating static route what we do we again go to global configuration mode and then we set the same ip route for the same destination but now this time we want to follow this path so now the next hop address will be 192.168.3.2 so this will be 3.2 so this this command was in my memory so in the memory of uh, the router so you can see same command IP root for this destination. This time we want to use this router as a next hop. So this will be our floating static route. For that, we have to define the administrative distance uh, as well. So 130 is our administrative distance for this route and enter. So we have defined two routes. We have defined these two routes to go to this same network. So one is our static route, second one is our floating. So for example, now we want to see the route here, again, the routing table here, okay? So for that, what we do, we see show IP route, and you see here, we see the same, same static route there. We don't see the recently configured static route in this routing table, only S is there, this administrative system one is there. This is because this route whose administrative distance is one is working as our primary route, primary path and it's functioning. So this route, uh, the floating route will not come into play. Okay, as soon as, as soon as we just remove this link, then this route should come into play. And for as a proof, again, we can go to this one, so this chain that this chain to down because we, we disconnected. We see show IP root, and now you can see this one that to reach this destination, you can go via this router, and now the administrative distance you can see that is 130. It means the floating route uh, is showing up in this routing table. It, 
So in the case of this primary link failure, this is started working. Okay, so in this way, the static route is helpful in, in, in as, a, as a backup route in the network. So yeah, I hope this uh, demonstration will help uh, to further clarify the, uh, the idea about floating static routes in the network. Thank you.